In Creo Parametric, you can import an IGIS file. In a previous video, I exported this assembly as an IGIS file in four different ways. Let's take a look at importing it and just make sure that I don't get any conflicts between these models and what I'm importing. I am going to close this window and then erase not displayed to get that out of my computer's RAM. To bring in the IGIS file, you will click on the open command and let's go to the flat folder for the file with a flat option. In order to bring in the IGIS file, you can go to the type drop down list and about halfway down the list, you will find the IGIS option or you can change to all files. Here's the IGIS file. You can select it and then click import. And now we get a dialog box for configuring the import. It gives us the choice of bringing this in as a part or an assembly. Usually you should choose part. I'm going to go with the default option of assembly to show you what you're going to get. Then we have our profile section and it's using the current profile, whatever has been configured in my current Creo parametric session. I always like to check the option to use templates. That way I'm going to have my default templates being used as the basis for a part or an assembly. And then you have the import type. Most of the time you can leave this as automatic. A lot of times I will change this to geometry just to be certain. If you click on the details button, you will get a dialog box that gives you even more configuration of the import. So here's another area for specifying that you want to use templates and the import type. You also have a model accuracy drop down list where you can change between automatic, internal or external, import facet model as an assembly and place imported components with a line coordinate system. There are also a number of different tabs in here for surface entities, curves, points, topology, filter and miscellaneous. I've never come across a situation where I've needed to change these things, but just be aware that they exist if you want to make sure that you are importing the geometry the way that you want it to be. And if you configure all of the different options in here the way that you like, in order to use these every time, you can save this as a profile. And I will just save it in the current directory. Here's where you can specify the type. It's set to IGIS profile default settings. And for the file name, I will call this IGIS import and then click the OK button. And the profile has been saved to the disk. Let's click the OK button out of here. Then we have some options where you can customize the layers. Honestly, I never do this. Also for generating a log file, I'll usually turn this off. And then we have the file name that it will be imported into. Let's click the OK button. All right, the import is complete. And in this particular situation, it looks pretty good. But if you take a look at the model tree, we do have the assembly. We have all the components imported underneath a generic name. And some of them failed, most likely due to some kind of accuracy error causes an issue between the geometry, between the original components and how they were opened up. So again, with the flat option, I usually don't bring them in as an assembly. Let's close out of here and then erase that and try that one more time. I will click on the open button and then let's change to all files. And we have our IGIS file. Let's import that. I will import this as a single part. Yes, let's use our templates, then click the OK button. All right, so this one took quite a while to process as well, but no regeneration errors. Again, it looks pretty good. We have our part file with a single import feature in it. If I expand the design items folder, which was added in Creo Parametric 8.0, we can see that there is a single body in this particular part but you can go to the import feature, left click on it, and then go to the edit definition icon in the mini toolbar. And now we have the import tab. You'll notice that the default option under import as is add geometry. Before I change that though, let's click on the import data doctor icon. 
And now we are in the import data doctor environment. If you take a look at the GTS tree, the geometry topology structure tree, you can see that we have quilts in here. We also have bodies. And if I scroll down in the list, then near the bottom, we have some more surfaces in addition to quilts. And then we have datums. And underneath datums, this will include curves and points. And if you have any entities that are hidden, sometimes you might see them in an exclude folder. But that's what we have in the import data doctor. Let's cancel out of here. Yes, I want to quit IDD mode. And now that I am back on the import tab, let's change from add geometry to add bodies and then hit the check mark. Now, uh, when I deselect and then take a look in the design items folder, we actually have 99 bodies located in here. So you can see all the different entities that were brought in. And so this is something that you can do in Creo 7.0 and later to be able to use all the imported entities as separate bodies instead of a single body. So that's an example of importing an IGIS file that used the flat option. Let's take a look at some of the others. Let me hit the open button and then go up a folder. Now we'll take a look at the one level option and then change the type to all files and then select the IGIS file and I'll bring this in as a part. Yes, I will use templates and bring it in as geometry. Let's click the OK button. And it brought in the part, but you'll notice there is no geometry. Even under design items, yeah, there's one body, but there's nothing in it. The reason that there's nothing here is because when you export an IGIS file using the one level option, you are only going to get the geometry at the top level. And that would just be assembly level features. And so maybe you have some surfaces at the top level, but if you have any cuts or holes, well, that's just subtracting material. So in this particular situation, by using the one level option, I don't have anything in here from my IGES file. So that's one reason that I almost never ever use the one level option when exporting an assembly to IGES. Okay, let's try one of the other different options. Let's go to open, and this time we will try all levels, and then change the list in here to all files. And here you see that we have a number of different IGES files because when you export using the all levels option, it is going to create an individual IGES file for every single part and assembly. Let's choose the IGES file and then choose to bring it in. Here you'll notice that it's bringing in as an assembly. I will use the same file name. Let's click the open button. All right, so we have imported and we have in our, our assembly. And you'll notice once again, we got some regeneration errors in here. You can see that we have some validation failures in and below the item. Import validation failures, that was something that was added around Creo 4.0 or so. You can see that we also have the notifications in here in the notification center for those import validation failures. Hey, if you go to file and then options and options once more, here we have notification center. And then down within here, if I scroll down, here we have the import validation failure. And you'll notice that this one is grayed out. We're not able to change that. It's something that it is automatically checking. Here we have import validation issues. I have that set to do not show, but you can change that to warning with message, warning or error. So just be aware that there is a little bit of capability for configuring the display of those in the notification center. Let's cancel out of here. And so again, we do have some issues in here. If I select one of these components and open it up in its own separate window, it looks like it's imported pretty well. It looks like there's a curve in here. But if I take a look up at the front, yeah, I can see that there are some issues with the surfaces that were imported. So I might need to go into the import data doctor in order to resolve those different problems. So again, IGES is not perfect. These are some of the things that you can encounter. 
let me go back to the assembly level so that was the effect of importing an IGES file using the all levels option let me close out of here to avoid some potential conflicts and then erase not displayed now let's take a look at importing the fourth and final option let me click on the open button and then change to the all parts folder and change the type to all files in this particular situation not only do we have IGES files for all the parts and subassemblies but you get an individual IGES file for every single instance or occurrence of a component in the assembly so let's choose to open up the IGES file hey here it's set to part by default that's fine for me let's click the open button and here you'll notice in this particular situation we're not getting any geometry let's try that once more let's close that and erase it and then go to the open button and change the type to all files let's find the top level assembly I just file and then change the type to assembly and now we'll click the OK button and this one once again gave us an issue we are not seeing any individual components or any of the geometry so why is that happening I don't know I've never used the all parts option before so again the way that I prefer to import things is exporting them with the flat option and then importing them into a single individual part and then potentially changing the import feature in order to bring in individual bodies let's take a look at the options once more if I go to file options options and then choose data exchange here's where you can specify the import profiles that you want to use so you could either select a profile that already exists or you could even use the options in here in order to set up the import profile right within your Creo parametric options dialog box but let's cancel out of here then let's go to the configuration editor and I will click the find button and then let's choose profiles underscore IGES and find now and here we have the import profile IGES option and you can set that to the file and path of the IGES import profile that you want to use for bringing in new IGES files. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.